Thank you so much for joining us today. Today I have a great resource for all of you. Um, my friend Karen Kelly, who is a nurse practitioner, she is a, a professional affiliate and an overall amazing woman. She works with Whole Family Healthcare and they have two locations, one in Lake Mary and one in Winter Park. The reason why I asked Karen to be on this call today is that I walked in on a conversation uh, where she was explaining to two people in the waiting room about how food sensitivities, food allergies can affect us, can affect our physical bodies. And I had just done an interview with somebody who actually had PNES because he had gluten intolerance and he was was not diagnosed at this time. So Karen and I got to speaking and I I just had to invite her on. So thank you so much for joining us. And you. For, I can't, you talked about a lock and a key thing and I'd love for you to explain that because there's no way I could. <laughs> yeah, so what I like to tell patients is uh, there's a lot of symptoms that patients have and the last thing that they typically think about is their diet for some reason. People don't understand that the foods that you eat that you know, don't cause you any issues in terms of your stomach upset or anything like that can come out in other ways and mood um, or food sensitivities, I'm sorry, can affect your mood. It can be the reason why you're not losing weight. It can be the reason why you have acne or skin problems or eczema or um, anything, even seizures, uh, as you kind of mentioned. Um, nobody would typically think about that. But if you think about it, you're, and, and this is what I try to explain to the patients is, you have, you know, your skin is your number one defense mechanism. The second one is your gut. So that is the second place that we need to look at um, in terms of what the food is doing to your body. So I describe it as if you think about your, your gut lining as a, a system of locks, right? And the food is the key, right? You want the food that you eat to go down into your system, into your gut, and you want it to unlock good pathways, not inflammatory pathways. So the only way to make sure that you're getting the right keys to unlock the correct locks, essentially, is to make sure that you don't have any food sensitivities. So we, we do a, a panel at Whole Family Healthcare, this is what we do, we take a, um, your blood, and then we send it off to the lab, and then we, we, we test for any kind of immune, immune reaction or response to the foods that you eat. And these are everyday foods. These are eggs, milk, dairy, cheese, um, all types of vegetables. So we test for over 208 food sensitivities. So that's a lot. And, and I mean, fruits, even vanilla, things that you wouldn't ordinarily think you could be um, sensitive to. So we take all that and then we get the information back in a very colorful report that tells us you know, if that spinach that you're eating is actually the correct key for the system of locks that you have, or is it that your body naturally has a sensitivity? So it's not an allergy, it's a sensitivity, essentially meaning you ate a food, you know, and it went in and it didn't cause you any issues at the time. So you may think it's good for you. However, inside your gut, it may have unlocked a more inflammatory pathway. So over time, if you continue to eat that food, you develop more and more of a sensitivity to it, and that's when you start to see symptoms. So then when you truly figure out if you're, if you're sensitive to certain foods is to actually test the immunological response to the foods that you're eating every day. Wow. Have you ever heard of people having seizures because of oh, that? Absolutely. Yes. So it, because they um, aren't aware that they have a sensitivity to it, usually the symptoms don't like make sense. Like I would never automatically think I'm, you know, a seizure patient, we should check them for a gluten sensitivity or a gluten allergy. But nine out of 10 times, there's when you have any type of symptom whatsoever and no, no other reasoning or cause. For example, you went to the neurologist, you've been to every single doctor that you can possibly think of. And everybody says, well, listen, your blood looks good. You're your scans look good, your x-rays look good, everything looks good, they typically don't address your diet and how important that is. And your diet can be the reason you're having seizures or maybe you're suffering from depression or maybe you're suffering from insomnia or 
you know, anything, PTSD. So, it, you know, a lot of these things are made worse by the foods that you eat because you're eating the keys, right, essentially, that are unlocking the wrong pathways. So what happens when we unlock the wrong pathways is now if you think about like a system of gears, you eat the key, it unlocks something very inflammatory, now the gear is turning, all right? And then if you think about it, they just – Kind of keep growing as you continue to eat that food and over time you have this system of gears that's very inflammatory and seizures would be one of the more like severe um, cases in terms of food allergies or food sensitivities um, but it is absolutely possible it's amazing it's amazing how intricate our bodies are and how i mean it's just so connected it's not it's not just it's not just trauma. It can be food sensitivities or other things that are going wrong in the body. That Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because if you're eating foods that are inflammatory and you also have a trauma, the inflammatory process is accelerated. So the environment that the body's in, say if you're, you're having stress or you're, feel, you're, you, you're suffering from a trauma and you've got a lot of nervous energy surrounding that trauma, you create an environment within your body that is kind of at a fight or flight all the time. So that in itself is inflammatory. And then when you eat foods that are also inflammatory, it's kind of like putting gas on the fire. So we want to make sure that we put any fires out, especially when one of the most simple things that we can do is change your diet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's one of the things that we can control. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, thank you so much. That is so insightful and very helpful. Just looking at things from another perspective. Like I yeah. said, I wanted, I wanted a professional's uh, stand on what that looks like when we take something in that is not good for us and we just don't know. So the, the, the thing is, I just want to say one more thing. Yeah. The food sensitivity panel is not checking for foods that are bad for you. Essentially. These are good foods. This is banana, apple, yogurt, you know, things that we would ordinarily think our body is um, accepting or, or, you know, unlocking the correct pathways, but perhaps, you know, and, and everybody's different someone has a sensitivity to those healthy foods and they don't know it. So they will continue to eat the healthy foods, but really they have a sensitivity to it. So we'll have food sensitivities. I have not, I, I honestly have not done a food sensitivity test where I did not have um, a single reaction from somebody except for I'd have one pediatric patient that wasn't very sensitive. Mm -hmm. She was only six years old. Um, so she hasn't had time to really eat those foods for a period of her life that would kind of generate some sensitivities. So um, everyone else has at least everybody, everybody and the top three are gluten, egg and dairy and sugar. That would be like the top four. That's so good to know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the things that we can control. Oh. Well, thank you so much, Karen, for coming on and for letting us know. Um, I do encourage everybody who's watching to investigate, ask your doctors, see if there is an ability to do this, to take some blood and to do a food sensitivity test. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing that you can do to advocate for yourself if you are at the point of saying, I have no idea, because like Karen said, you might have your blood looks good, your x-rays look good, your scans look good, and nobody has answers. So I like the perspective that you gave that it's first your skin and then your gut that I've never heard that put before like that. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. I look forward to more conversations with you. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you, Christine.